Right, so we're at the stage now where we have checked out the, um, the model setup. Um, you know, we've assembled this uh, 3D velocity grid from um, local uh, uh, basin information, from regional basin information, from, um, from the, the standard model used to, uh, to generate uh, earthquake locations in, in northern Nevada. Um, we put all that together, and um, we checked out two products of the model assembler run that we ended with last time. The first product was the basin depth map, uh, which we'll do some more work with today. And the second product was the geotechnical map, which was uh, kind of strange, but um, not too bad. And so the, uh, the next step is, is, to, um, is to run the, the thing, uh, is to actually, uh, in, in this case, uh, since we haven't adopted uh, WP4 yet, we're still using E3D, the, uh, the aughts uh, um, era uh, product from, uh, from Livermore, software system from Livermore. Uh, and that runs on Linux. And so um, our, next, uh, our next step is to essentially upload our files and submit the job to, um, to, our, uh, uh, to COGS, which is, um, at the moment, the uh, one processor um, or one node dual processor um, Sun-branded uh, Linux uh, box that uh, we have available at the moment while they're installing and configuring the new cluster. Um, if we had um, a 32-bit uh, Linux implementation running in VMware on our Macs uh, or, or our PCs, we could run it on our local machine. And that actually might be faster than running it on COGS. Uh, but as soon as um, as soon as Gabe gets the uh, the new uh, cluster configured, that's going to be much much faster. Um, <clears throat> so we'll still want to upload our our runs now. After we ran model assembler, which was done on our local machine, there were a number of files written, and and um, what I've done here is I've opened a uh, an app called Transmit, um, which is very similar to the uh, free. Uh, FileZilla app. Uh, I just prefer it, so I was willing to pay for it. Uh, but the free FileZilla works just fine too. And um, what you see here are the the results of our of our run uh, on the left, which I'm you know sure you can't see on the video, um, but uh, I'll describe them to you. Um, our run included compiling the uh, the Java code, so. Uh, here I'm in the uh, local Olinghouse directory on the on the left, which is where we stopped last time. And uh, for instance, there's our um, um, our uh, JRG pack from the uh, um, from the run that had uh, um, uh, that had resulted in in our uh, um, in our uh, um, our velocity model, and you can see the rules.java. You can see the run.sh that was written by the uh, um, by the MACME um, uh, GUI, uh, the interface that we were working with the last three times, and also the Olinghouse.in that uh, we created. And so then the run.sh. Well, here in in uh, um, in uh, transmit, I can I can open that up. Uh, I can say edit with uh, transmit or text edit. And can I increase the size? Oh, not so easy. Okay, I'll open it in text edit and increase the size. Um, and um, <clears throat> and so now. Uh, on the video, you might you have a chance of of seeing it. 
Um, so we had uh, Java C star.java, and that, uh, that worked fine. And, the, uh, and then Java model assembler, that's the model assembler run. It takes uh, one thing it does, it takes the olinghouse.in that MACME ran or resulted in and gives us another version. We can take a look at that and see that it's been enhanced. In fact, uh, here it is. Uh, so I'll uh, increase that size. We'll need to refer to it as we, as we work with these files. OK. So um, it's got all the same lines, but the lines have been uh, enhanced. Um, so uh, for instance, <clears throat> you'll notice that to the source line, based on the latitude and longitude and the angle of the grid and everything else, there's been added a, um, uh, an L and an N parameter. That's the, those are the grid coordinates of the center of the fault, um, which is something that we didn't have to calculate uh, because um, model assembler calculated it for us. Uh, also, you notice that the V file lines have been detailed with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, really the dimensions in grid coordinates of the uh, of all the the uh, the p velocity, s velocity, density, q p and q s volumes. Um, let's see, the basin data inputs uh, were read by model assembler, but um, they're they'll be ignored by E three D. And the um, as is the geotech line, the timeline will be read by E3D. Notice that the um, uh, the the SAC lines have been processed by model assembler, and an L and N uh, coordinate added to each SAC line. That's going to give us a a seismogram for each of those locations that we provided the name for. So model assembler is in a way a, a preprocessor for E3D and WP4. Um, so that's uh, 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 one way that we'll uh, that we'll put all this together. Uh, and then <coughs> since we are running this on our local machine, not on a 32-bit um, um, Linux system, we had to exit. We can't we can't try to start uh, E3D. Uh, so I, I'm actually going to take that uh, uh, exit out um, of run.sh, and um, uh, I'm going to comment out the uh, the Java C. I'm going to comment out the Java, assuming that we can transfer up uh, the whole volumes, which are about 60 megabytes each. We got five of them to transfer up, uh, and so really all that run.sh is going to do is this. Uh, it's going to run in no hangup mode. It's going to run E3D, and it's going to run E3D with its control file being the the result of model assembler Olinghouse-MA.in. So that uh, that newly created file. All right. So I can just save that, um, and I'll uh, I'll close it. We go back to uh, transmit or or FileZilla, and um, so I'm going to pick a. Uh, uh, Basically, uh, go from the oldest file. Um, well, maybe I don't need the. Yeah, I might need the data files. Who knows? Maybe I'll need to assemble the whole model. Um, and I'm going to select uh, everything. Okay, this uh, Mac thing, uh, desktop store. I don't need that. These are some newer files that uh, we're going to ignore for now. Okay, so that's everything that I would have after the model assembler run. Um, the Olinghouse MA.in, the, um, uh, the run.sh that I've just edited, um, all of that is. Uh, uh, and then we have the 60 megabyte down here, the 60 megabyte uh, um, uh, model grids. Okay, so let's try to log into. Or connect to Cogs for SFTP, which is port 22. <coughs> the initial path is slash space slash Louis slash MA for Cogs. It'll be something different on the new cluster. Um, we're going to log in as guests, which we can still do on Cogs. You'll each have your own logins on the new cluster, and it's cogs.seismo.unri.edu. And uh, see if we can. You might have to be inside the Seismolab to connect. At least traditionally, 
um, we're going to uh, create, I'm going to click over here now, I'm going to create a new folder. So I go to action, um, let's see, oh, I have to uh, um, command click on that to unselect it. Oh, there's the new folder icon. So I'm going to make a new folder called uh, OH, all right, um, which is going to be over there. And um, guests should be able to create this folder. Yes. Okay. There's the OH folder. And uh, now I'll just drag everything uh, that's selected from the left side to the right side. We'll see how long it takes. Um, yeah, so the density dot float is taking. Um, yeah, it's going to take half a minute for each of those. Um, so uh, let's just make sure, uh, let's take a final pass through, while that's, those are uploading, let's take a final pass through the, uh, since we're on, I'm on Wi-Fi here, that's why it's so slow. If you're connected into the, uh, um, you know, with a direct uh, Ethernet, it's, uh, each, of those, each of those 60 megabyte files just takes uh, a few seconds. Um, some key things that uh, before the model assembler run, I had to uh, make sure were right. Okay, uh, I had to change the run platform, the platform line, uh, and make sure the architecture, the machine architecture, is Intel. Okay, that affects how everything's written, um, and uh, um, and then uh, you know these other paths are right, but they're not so critical to get right. Um, so the, uh, the Intel uh, architecture is really a key one there to look at. Um, sometimes uh, you don't get the right boundary condition. Um, we're using uh, uh, B equals uh, 3 here. We don't have any really low velocities. Um, well, maybe we do have low velocities. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to change that. Um, and since I've uploaded this file already to the uh, um, to the uh, I want to change it to B equals four, which allows for lower velocities uh, at at some expense of uh, on the boundaries um, at, at some expense of, of computation time. Active should be equal to zero. No no active grid uh, because we have a finite fault. Um, we are implementing attenuation with Q equals one. So that's all good. Um, the uh, the source, uh, you know, we're modeling a six point five here. Um, so uh, I wanted to double check the frequency uh, specification, and that is uh, zero point five hertz, which is what I wanted. Um, right. So that all looks looks fine. Um, and notice that if I wanted to do the other scenario, you know, rupturing away from sparks, this scenario is, uh, let's see, uh, our strike is 40, north 45 east. And um, so uh, looking north 45 east, the, uh, uh, the location of the, of the hypocenter will be uh, 7.2 kilometers in the strike direction. So that's up at the northeast corner of the fault. Almost there, almost at the end, and so we're going to rupture towards sparks. If I wanted to rupture away from sparks, I would just put a minus sign there, but I'm not going to do that here. Um, let's see. Uh, I can double check the rules. Uh, the the rock default rock geotechnical velocity, the default soil geotechnical velocity. That's all what I wanted. Um, Particularly, I should I should check the uh, uh, with E3D. It uses an approximation to do the uh, uh, to implement um, um, the viscoelastic uh, uh, Q, and um, and uh, that's uh, so it needs to know what frequency we're after here and 0.5 hertz. So everything is 0.5 hertz. We're all good there. Um, uh, let's see. The uh, the basin and geotech we don't have to worry about um, the uh, we've got the image outputs that we want the amplif outputs we've already looked at they they're a product of model assembler 
Um, so mode equals four is the uh, is the PGV peak ground velocity in the horizontal direction. Mode equals two is the uh, snapshots of the wave propagation, <coughs> and uh, yeah, that's all all right. Um, so uh, I just want to correct that that one um, um, that one uh, thing on the grid line B equals four. So I'll uh, I'll uh, put, let's see, I'll save that here and then I'll put it away. Okay, so it looks like we're getting to be done at the very oldest files now. Okay, it's done. And um, so I wanted to edit now on, this is on the, uh, on the right, you know, we're on the, uh, the cog side. <coughs> And uh, so I can just say action uh, edit with uh, with text edit, and I'm editing the one that's on the um, on cogs, uh, but I'm using you know old familiar text edit, so that's convenient. And I want it to go to the grid line and change b equals three to b equals four. Uh, model the the MACME interface seems to have a problem uh, keeping that in. And uh, so I save that, and I should I'll get a, a ding saying that it's been transferred up. Uh, at least I hope. <coughs> um, let's see, and I'll uh, rearrange that. Um, right, it's transferred everything via you know everything's the same uh, same age now. Okay, so. Um, We've uh, <coughs> we've put that in there, and uh, everything's transferred up. Now we got to run it, so we're we're back to our um, um, our terminal window, and we say SSH um, uh, guest at cogs dot. Um, now you've. Kyle, you've put your thing in a different folder? Yeah. Very good. Um, and we can run ours at the same time. Um, it'll just it'll be slow, but okay. I'm not too concerned about that right now. You'll see why. Cogs.sizemo.unr.edu. Um, and I put in the password that we all know. And I got it right. And I have to say cd slash space, which is the extra disk, uh, Louis MA, which is the space, the place I've, I've made uh, where you can do these computations. Let's just do a df minus k dot for the free disk space uh, on this disk. And um, we have, uh, this is the number of 1k blocks available. So that's the number of kilobytes. That's the number of megabytes. So we have 689 gigabytes available on that disk. So I'm not too yeah, and it's 50% used. So we're okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on here that could be taken off if we started to run out of space, archived. But we've left it on 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 this disk as an archive. So until that disk fails, we've got it. And of course, the important stuff I have copies of. Um, so I'm going to CD now to my Olinghouse directory, which I called OH. And um, uh, and if I just do an LS, you know, I see all the stuff in there. Um, and I, I like even better uh, LS uh, minus uh, L uh, pipe to uh, more. Oops. Pipe to more, or a lot of a lot of my colleagues prefer less. Um, so there's the uh, uh, we we the oldest files are the newest. The way we transfer them over, <coughs> but you can see the 60 megabyte density um, and uh, the uh, uh, the uh, velocity and. And the two, the two velocities, P and S, oh, those are the Qs. 
and there was um, there's the VP and VS, and all those files are the same size. Another file that gets written is um, let's see this this time hist dot sac dot intel. Okay, uh, that's another thing to check on the source line. Okay, so let me go back to here. Um, let's see, it's over here. Um, and that's the uh, olinghouse.ma.in. And uh, I'll uh, edit that with text edit. Uh, so let's just double check. Um, we've got architecture is Intel. And so MA, uh, model assembler writes that uh, time history, that's the source time function, uh, which is written as a Gaussian, and um, which is what, you know, knowing nothing else about that fault, that's a kinematic approximation that we can, we can use. Um, if we knew more about that fault, uh, or if we wanted to incorporate the source time history of a real earthquake into our scenario, that's where we would do it. Um, and using, um, let's see, looking at the source line, there it is. Um, you know, our type is seven, which is a, uh, a plane that has the same time function and the same um, the, the same uh, moment and the same source time history uh, everywhere. And it's reading the uh, for the source time history. It's reading that timehist.sac.intel, and that is there. Um, so that's good, um, and it was created for 0.5 hertz source, which is what we want to do. Yeah, so that all looks good. Um, okay. So, um, uh, and we'll check our uh, uh, more uh, run.sh just to double check that. It's going to skip over the Java, and it's just, since we were able to transfer up all of our uh, all of our files, including the big ones, we don't have to run. Mo we could run model assembler here and remake the model, but we don't have to. So I'm just going to start it. So I'm going to say csh. Um, actually, um, I'm going to give this this command directly. Okay, I'm going to pull this command out of out of this and and just give it directly because there's that nice nohup uh, facility. Um, where uh, uh, let's see, and then I want to put it. Whoops! I want to put an ampersand after it. Okay, so that's going to run it in the background, and it won't hang up when I log out. Okay, um, and uh, and okay, so let's. It's appending the output to nohop nohop dot out, and so um, you know I've got this uh, organized by date. And if I hit, uh, uh, I've got the the cog side uh, on the right side selected. So I hit refresh, and there it is. There's no hub dot out, and it's already got something in it. Let's see what's in it. Um, so I'll uh, uh, edit that with. Uh, uh, I'm going to edit it with text edit. Uh, just so I can show it to you. I would edit it with transmit if I was just looking at my own screen. Um, but I'll edit it with, with text edit it's instead. So I got to find text edit. There we go. Okay, so um, you know, as you start the uh, the computation, this is something you need to check. Um, you know, it uh, E3D and and the others are, are similar. Um, it tells you what it actually found. Okay, so in the actual grid that it's computing on, here's the minimum VP, the maximum VP. The minimum is just is about the water velocity. That's good. The maximum is not too high. Um, it's uh, mid crustal velocity, and that also squares with what we wanted. Notice the minimum VS is quite low. 
below one kilometer per second. Uh, the maximum Vs uh, you can see is really uh, the, the maximum Vp divided by the square root of 3, which is fine in the crust. Here's the density. The density does get pretty low up in these, uh, the shallow parts of these basins. Okay. So even, even in that 150, you know, our, our H, our DH, um, you know, our calculation is uh, 150, uh, um, 150 uh, meters. So even you know, averaging in everything in, in the upper 150 meters, we still get this uh, fairly low minimum velocity, minimum Vs. Uh, so that's interesting. Notice uh, the huge range that Q varies over, QP, QS, you know, 12 to, uh, to 2,000. Uh, and then uh, QF is what we wanted, the center frequency of attenuation that we're approximating. Um, OK, it's, it's evaluating the current condition for us. We could make this calculation more efficient. We wouldn't need quite, we could space the time steps out a little bit more because CT is 12 milliseconds. So you know we're 23% inefficient, and um, uh, so I could set dt to uh, 12 milliseconds instead of 10 if I wanted to, and then you can see that a few time steps have already started. I got some errors. In my... Yeah. So at the top, a couple lines it says no such file or directory, but then down here it looks like it's running. Uh, maybe you had a, an old nohub.out? I don't think so. I made a brand new folder. Oh, I see. You think maybe it appended to an old one? Yeah. That's probably, you're probably right. Yeah, it always, the nohub. you have to remove the nohub.out dot out for every run. I have the old one right here. Yeah. That's probably what, what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, no yeah, hub dot outs are always appended, so it's running. It's running. Okay. okay, let me show you real quick. Let's let's check the progress of this. Okay, so uh, I'm back in uh, in transmit. You know, you're back in uh, uh, FileZilla. Let's refresh this uh, this uh, remote folder again, the OH folder on Cogs, and uh, uh, you can see that there's uh, all these. Snapshots being generated as the as the calculation goes on, no hub dot out grows in size. You can see it's already grown to almost two k uh, of this of this sort of output. Um, I'm going to close it here. You know the the no hub dot out is is a nice little text documentation of what happened. You know what was really what did E3D really find in that grid and and uh, what's going on. So I. I I keep it with all the other data products from the run, and here's some more data products that we have. Um, so uh, uh, notice that every three time steps, there's uh, three files output. Uh, so for instance, that's uh, Olinghouse uh, M six point five dash snap dot uh, which is actually going to be a uh, Intel file. Um, uh, and then the the number the the time step uh, number is is there. This is the 39th time step. So uh, maybe by time step 39 we should see something on this. So I'm going to uh, transfer this up to my Olinghouse folder. So I just uh, whoops I'll just select the three of them, grab them, and transfer them over. Okay. Um, there they are. Um, okay, and uh, what are those? Those are the x, y, and z components of uh, ground velocity. Okay, on the map, that's what I asked for: is snapshots of a of the of the uh, snapshots of the uh, wave propagation on a map. Okay, so let's uh, let's open up uh, ViewMat. Now that we've got it on the local machine, we can use uh, View mat, and I have it started up here somewhere. Okay, and um, yeah, so I make sure I'm not going to overwrite my current any of my current windows. Uh, so we open binary file, and uh, we go to Olinghouse, sort it by date modified. 
Let me get the x component. Okay, that's the horizontal component in the easting direction of ground velocity. Okay, so I'll select that one. And so this is going to be a 32-bit whoops, 32-bit Intel float, and um, the uh, it's coming out as a as an E3D image. Um, so uh, uh, oh, I got a message from Cogs here. Oh, that's all right. That's a me that's a message from uh, Java on uh, on the Mac. Which is not entirely comfortable under Yosemite. Um, the bytes to skip on a uh, E3D image are eight. There are two. Each uh, E3D image file uh, at the start has two four-byte integers uh, that begin it, um, which actually are the dimensions. Now uh, uh, we might have to go and look at the .in file to remember the dimensions. So the elements per vector are, are the x direction. That's the number of samples in the x direction. That's the easting direction. That's uh, the n in the in the grid line. That's n equals, okay, and that's 387. And the vectors per plane is the y direction. That's the northing direction, and that's um, uh, 294. And that's uh, l in the uh, uh, on the uh, um, the dot in files, and uh, so we skip eight bytes uh, and uh, put in those dimensions, and we read it, and um, looks like it has a maximum of zero. Looks like uh, so far the motions have not. Uh, let's see, and I'll press uh, Command M. No, there's. Uh, well, let's make sure we're not getting uh, 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 nans or anything. Uh, no, I'm just getting zero. Right, so uh, the motion has not reached the surface yet. Okay, so uh, I'll go back and refresh this. It's down calculating, you know, at 15 kilometers depth. Now we have the 84th um, time step here. So I'll drag those over, acquire those, and uh, let's uh, let's load in the 84th. That, that one instead. Okay, x coordinate at the x direction again, x component, 32 bit Intel float, um, eight bytes to skip. There's the uh, correct uh, dimensions. Um, still zero. Um, yeah, okay, it's taking some time for it to propagate the, uh, the motion to propagate at 10 kilometers up the fault. You know, up the up the dip of the dip length of the dip width of the fault. <clears throat> so uh, so we have to wait. But you can monitor uh, you can monitor it this way. Uh, you can keep connecting and and see uh, you know see what time step it's on. Um, I'll try bringing over uh, the ninety sixth time step. Let's see if that's any different. Uh, open binary file. Get that one and bring it in again. Uh, press max again. Nope. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're just seeing uh, seeing a lot of output from. Uh, um, not from COGS, but from uh, Java on this Mac here. Okay, so we, we'd have to wait longer. All right, so um, now, um, you know, this is, uh, this is like, uh, uh, you know, you watch a cooking show on TV and they put, uh, um, they put the, uh, the batter into one oven and, and they open another oven and they take out the baked cake. All right, so that's what I've done. I've uh, already run this uh, this case, and so let's go and, and look at a uh, um, let's go and look at a uh, um, uh, the uh, the what what it looks like when it's done running. Okay, it's running rather slowly because uh, Kyle's running too, so you know that's the way it goes. Um, what do we get out? Okay, here are all these files arranged in. Uh, in time order, 
and uh, there's all those uh, uh, snap files ending with uh, number 6000. Okay. Um, and uh, um, so I can uh, I could transfer that into there. Um, oh, I got to reconnect here. Yeah, it's not letting me download either. It yeah, maybe. Let Let me try to reconnect. I got connected again. Um, let's see, and where is my polling house folder? Uh, that's in my desktop. Okay. Let's see if I can get it now. Yeah, I just had to reconnect. You know, if you wait uh, a little bit, it uh, um, it will make you reconnect. Uh, and I got to refresh this one too. Um, oh yeah, and these are older files now because they were uh, um, they were. Uh, um, they were done uh, on Friday or something, or a week ago Friday. Okay, so let me load that one just so you can see what it's like. Um, and uh, I'll load the X component. And uh, same thing. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, at maximum. Um, now, uh, the first thing uh, that you have to notice, uh, I should try to load a lot of files here. All right. <clears throat> um, is uh, the map appears inverted because um, you know the L axis points north, but uh, notice that it uh, points to the. Uh, um, you know we, we need a we need a south pointing axis, so we need to flip it over. So that's methods on each vector um, mirror, and we just mirror all the traces, the whole range of traces. There it is, and um, uh, and then. Uh, with these uh, snapshot files, it's uh, it's good enough to um, to uh, 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 show them as um, um, it's it's good enough to show them as uh, um, uh, in, in uh, red, white, blue um, the seismic uh, uh, colors. So. Uh, We'll do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, amplitude clip is going to be max. There we go. Um, you know, and this is at the very end of the calculation. What do we calculate? Uh, Sixty seconds or something. Uh, you know, we have to get that. Uh, um, let's see. Ah, there we go. Um, right. And um, uh, just checking this out real quick, you know, the map makes sense. Uh, there's the the Reno Basin. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, maximize it at uh, zero point two times max. Apply changes again. Um, so you can see the South Reno Basin, the Sparks Basin, the um, uh, the West Reno Basin, the Verdi Basin, 
Um, this is an artifact of the uh, the way we got some very low um, we had some very low velocity measurements uh, out in uh, uh, Golden Valley, um, which were extended uh, you know in the valley uh, for several kilometers. Um, that's uh, that's the effect of the uh, the model. You can clearly see too that uh, you know imposing the uh, in this calculation imposing the um, um, now let's see there we go imposing the the um, uh, the the Abbott uh, basin depth model for Reno had a striking effect. You know, we have these fairly deep volcanic basins out in the Virginia range, and that's what the, uh, the fault was rupturing through. Um, and uh, uh, there appears to be some energy that's trapped outside the area of the model of uh, uh, the area of the Abbott model, which is this outline here that you can see. So that's, uh, that's something we're going to check with Kyle's run, which, is, uh, which doesn't have the Abbott model. So the, the basins are not as detailed in the, uh, in the uh, Jockins model, the regional model, uh, but they're about the same depth, at least the West Reno Basin. So we'll see uh, how much difference there is in, in the ground motions. So that's just a snapshot. And, and here, you know, uh, red would be is positive. So that's uh, red is, um, is uh, ground velocity in the x direction. And here it's saturating at uh, about one and a half centimeters per second, 0.014 um, meters per second. That's the units that come out. Um, and uh, um, so that's a, a you know that's certainly noticeable ground motion. And this is a whole 60 seconds after. Um, uh, okay, but the one uh, so so this is how to check the progress of the calculation. I. One thing I'm looking for in here in this snapshot that I don't see is a bunch of uh, grid dispersion artifacts. Okay, I can see the artifact that I know is the outline of the Abbott model. Okay, the Abbott Basin Depth model, but I don't see other sort of square-looking artifacts. If I saw waves that were kind of uh, uh, square um, uh, in plan view, I would be very suspicious. And I'm not really seeing those uh, even in the low velocity basins here. So, you know, while I'm running this calculation, allowing for some contamination of the wave propagation with grid dispersion, it seems I've I've managed to avoid uh, avoid it, um, you know, for the most part. Um, so we may have some validity. Of course, the the validity of these calculations. Can only be uh, proved by comparing, you know, scenarios uh, for earthquakes that have recorded data, and we do have that. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in the Reno Basin. To, uh, you know, it was started by Asha Pancha uh, ten years ago. Uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done to validate these scenarios in the Reno Basin. Okay, so what we really want, the product we really want to look at. Um, Let's see, not from there, um, is uh, you'll notice a few other files that are output. There are the, uh, the, there's some SAC files, right, from the three stations or four stations that we put in, like LMR um, and uh, Kyle's uh, house and um, uh, West McCarran uh, um, Mayberry intersection over the deepest part of the basin. So we have seismograms for that. But this one that ends in dot capital V, that's uh, the most important one. Okay, that's the PGV map. So let's transfer that over and take a look at it. Um, and you can see I've already taken a look at it. And so I'll, uh, I'll bring it into here. Um, I'll open this binary file, um, and uh, oh yeah, there it is. 
So it's also a uh, E3D Intel format image file, 32-bit Intel float. You've got to skip over eight bytes. Uh, and there's the correct dimensions. All right, so we read that. Obviously, we thought we had a, uh, a northwest, a northeast striking uh, uh, fault. So clearly, this is mirrored. So we've got to do the mirroring. Okay. Um, and notice that it's all red. Okay. Um, so. Um, uh, and that's because the peak ground velocity is uh, is it's the absolute value of it. So uh, you know this is all positive. So let's uh, let's work this up here. Okay, we have the Olinghaus max file dot v, uh, and it's been mirrored. Let's uh, plot it according to the maximum. Um, the amplitude is. Uh, uh, you know, peak ground velocity. So, it, and actually, it's horizontal peak ground velocity summed by uh, or or evaluated by E3D. Um, so we'll just call it PGV. Everybody, you know, until the Christchurch earthquake, everybody thought that the peak ground velocity would always be um, would always be uh, horizontal, never vertical. But that wasn't true in Christchurch. Probably would be true for us this uh, strike slip earthquake on the Olinghaus, uh, and the and the units are uh, meters per second, okay, and um, uh, I'll use my um, my blue, red, orange, yellow kind of hazard map um, uh, scale, and we have um, zero point one five. Um, meters or 0 0.15 kilometers is our um, is our delta between the elements and vectors, and the elements are uh, uh, distance east in uh, kilometers, and the vectors are distance north uh, in kilometers. And I have to start at some distance. Uh, and I forget. Do you remember the 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 north south dimension of our grid in kilometers? I need to put that in for the z the zero label on the vectors. Kilometers. How many? Forty-four. Okay. Let's see how that works out. Uh, oh, and I got to click uh, positive amplitudes only. Okay. So there's a uh, a PGV map. A, uh, sh it's kind of a shake map like product, um, and we have uh, uh, notice there's a little bit of uh, that's that's minus uh, zero point one, so um, it's overshot a little bit. I, I better say forty three point And I'm still, oh, yeah, right, 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 44.1. OK, now no way to convince, uh, yeah, no way to convince, uh, uh, you know, these are just uh, four byte uh, floats. So uh, they're, they're coming out quite inaccurate, um, you know, down at the sixth decimal place. So that's zero. I got it, I got it right enough. Uh, let's see, you can see the distance east. Um, I'm going to get rid of these picks I made here. Um, and let's just see. Uh, it's, uh, so the maximum motion, which is right here at the, uh, the southwest end of the, uh, of the fault trace, of the Olinghouse fault trace, um, out there in the Virginia range, or actually close to I-80, is 70 uh, meters a second. I mean, I'm sorry, 70 centimeters a second, 0.7 meters per second. I mean, for a local earthquake, that's a high, that's a high value. You know, if there's a highway bridge along I-80 here, I'd be kind of worried about it. Okay, in this scenario. Um, so that's the maximum in this scenario. 
Uh, remember, we have we have uh, we have buried the fault uh, two kilometers deep to keep it out of the basin. Um, and there's also this this these sort of larger motions that are kind of focused in by the lensing of the uh, of the uh, um, the lensing of the. So John, it looks like there's an abrupt change, kind of in the in the vertically running line in the center of that image. Right. That's the edge of the of the Abbott model. Yeah. Do you think it's overestimating on the right side or underestimating on the left side? Um. This is the conflict. You know, the Abbott model assumes that the volcanics are are basement, and the Jockins model assumes that the volcanics are basin. So that's the fundamental, you know, geologic idea or geophysical conflict between those two, those two uh, basin data sets. Uh -huh. And we've we've run right into it here. Okay, which is why we got to compare with the other. Uh, you know, we've got to to be more real realistic. We've got to change one of one or the other of the models. Because it, it makes sense that you consider the volcanics to be basement, because it's significantly harder than the. Olympia Except you go down, you go down to kilometer depths. Which these sediments in the Virginia range, these volcanic sediments in the Virginia range, do get to, and they actually have lower velocities and lower densities than the uh, than than a sedimentary basin would. Is Special feature of our area. Is that because of the volcanic volcanic plastic sediments? Exactly. Yeah. Them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I just wanted to see, you know, in South Reno here. Yeah, we're getting up to 30, uh, 30 centimeters a second there. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to show this at, I'm going to clip this at 0 0.3, um, and we'll have solid yellow for all areas that are, that are above, um, um, 30, uh, centimeters per second. So in fact, we can change the, uh, we can change this. We can give it a factor of a hundred and, um, and make it PGV in centimeters per second instead, and we'll uh, we'll clip it at 30 centimeters per second. Okay, same same look, but now everywhere uh, you know, um, 30 centimeters per second is pretty uh, um, is 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 a severe amount of shaking, uh, according to uh, uh, the Mercalli uh, intensity scale. Um, okay, so uh, uh, okay, next time, which will be Wednesday, I'll have to get to that, and uh, we'll we'll actually put this on the uh, the shake map Mercalli intensity scale, just to have a look at it in in sort of a color scale that's familiar to the press and uh, and many people who look at earthquakes.